All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his glorious book, Glory be to him who took his votary by night from the sacred place of worship in Mecca to Al-Aqsa Mosque, the surroundings of which we have blessed, so that we might show him some of our signs. Indeed, he alone is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that our master, Prophet Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his household companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. It goes without saying that Al-Isra and Al-Maraj, or the Prophet's miraculous night journey and ascension to heavens, is a journey that's full of great secrets. It is a journey that stands unique throughout the history of humanity. It was made to happen to honor the seal of prophets and messengers and to comfort him after years through which he, along with his companions, experienced different forms of persecution and harm. And after he had lost within a couple of days since the start of the tenth year of his mission, his uncle Abu Talib, who was a great supporter of him, as well as his wife, who had a warm heart, Lady Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, who presented a safe refuge for him in times of hardship. The anguish of the Prophet increased after the sorrowful journey that he made to the city of Al-Ta'if, which was one of the hardest situations in his life. After the persecution that the Prophet, peace be upon him, went through at the hands of his own people, he traveled to At-Ta'if, hoping that he would find support from its people. However, they were harsher and more cruel to him than his own people. They ordered their children to throw stones at him till his feet bled. On his way back, the Prophet invoked his Lord with this pitiful supplication that shows humbleness and complete surrender to Allah, saying, O oh Allah, to you do I complain, complain my weakness, my helplessness, and my lowliness before people. O oh most merciful, you are the Lord of the weak, you are my Lord, into whose hands will you entrust me? unto some far-off stranger who would ill-treat me, or unto an enemy whom you have empowered against me. I care not if you are not angry with me, but, you are, but your favoring help for me is the broader way. I take refuge in the light of your countenance, whereby all darkness is illuminated, and the things of this world and the next are rightly ordered. Lest you make descend your anger upon me, or lest your wrath besets me. There is no power and no might except through you. After all these sufferings, there came this divine gift of the miraculous journey of Al-Isra Al and Al-Maraj, in which Allah the Almighty showed his prophet peace be upon him, transcendental facts and universal secrets that no other prophet or angel had seen before. Thus, that was to honor the prophet and to support him and to increase his steadfastness and his plea that Allah stands with him. And here are some lines of poetry that Al-Imam Al-Busayri composed to commemorate the event. He says, O oh, Prophet, you traveled overnight from one sacred place to another, as the full moon travels at night through the intense darkness. O oh, Prophet, you continued ascending overnight until you reached your destination, so close to Allah, a position that had never been attained nor sought. O oh, Prophet, you were preferred by all prophets and messengers, just as a preference is given by a subordinate to his master. 
The event of Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj is one of the greatest miracles that Allah gave to his Prophet peace be upon him. And the memory of this great incident we might get some lessons and insights like the following ones. One of these lessons is making use of the available means. This is not contrary to relying to Allah. Allah the Almighty provided the Prophet on that night with a creature known as Al Buraq to be his means of transportation in, in his journey. Although Allah was able to take the Prophet in the journey without any medium. On the other hand, although the Prophet was completely relying on Allah when he reached Jerusalem, he tethered Al Buraq to teach his nation the necessity of making use of the available means. The Prophet, peace be upon him, also said, So I tethered it. Al Imam al Nawawi said, Tethering the, the Burak indicates the necessity of being cautious and making use of the available means and shows that such conduct is not contrary to relying to Allah. A true believer acts on the basis that nothing will avail him except his work and meanwhile he trusts Allah on the basis that nothing will happen to him against the will of Allah. This balanced understanding is the one meant by the saying of the Prophet peace be upon him where he advises If the final hour comes while you have a palm cotton in your hands and it is possible to implant it then implant it and his saying If you all depend on Allah with due reliance he would certainly give you provision as he gives it to birds which set off hungry in the morning and return with full stomachs at dusk. Another lesson is that all prophets and messengers are brothers. All prophets and messengers are conveyors of one message. In terms of fundamentals and basics, although their laws may differ, Allah says, We never sent a messenger before you, O Muhammad, without revealing to him that there is no, no God worthy of worship except me. So worship me alone. The Prophet also said, Prophets are paternal brothers. Their mothers are different, but their religion is one. Allah also says, Say, O Prophet, come, let me recite to you what your Lord has forbidden to you. Do not associate others with him in worship. Do not fail to honor your parents. Do not kill your children for fear of poverty. We provide for you and for them. Do not come near indecencies, openly or secretly. Do not take a human life made sacred by Allah except with a legal right. This is what he has commanded you, so perhaps you will understand. And do not come near the wealth of the orphan unless intending to enhance it. Until they attain maturity, give full measure and weigh with justice. We never require of any soul more than what it can afford. Whenever you speak, maintain just even regarding a close relative. And fulfill your covenant with Allah. This is what he has commanded you, so perhaps you will be mindful. Indeed, that is my path. Perfectly straight, so follow it and do not follow other ways, for they will lead you away from his way. This is what he has commanded you, so perhaps you will be conscious of Allah. Ibn Abbas commented, commented on the Ten Commandments mentioned in these verses, stating, These are fundamental verses which have not been abrogated in any religion. The forbidden things mentioned in these, in, in these verses are forbidden for all people. These verses are the basis of the scripture. He who, act, he who acts upon 
these commandments will enter paradise and he who pays no heed to them will will be sent to hellfire one of the greatest things with which Allah the Almighty honored our Prophet peace be upon him was that he most high gathered all the prophets and messengers for his sake at Al-Aqsa mosque where he led them in prayer moreover when they met the Prophet in heavens they greeted him saying welcome righteous brother and Prophet this particular event marked the transition of the spiritual leadership to him peace be upon him and is viewed as a practical application of the covenant that Allah took from the prophets as he most high says and recall all people of the scripture when Allah took the covenant of the prophets saying whatever I give you of the scripture and wisdom and then there comes to you a messenger confirming what is with you you must believe in him and support him Allah said have you acknowledged and taken upon that my commitment they said we have acknowledged it he said then be your witness and I am with you among the witnesses and this connection Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abdullah ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with both of them said never did Allah send a prophet unless he had taken a covenant from him that he would believe in and support Muhammad peace be upon him if Allah sent him while he was alive another thing to be learned here is the sublime status of Al-Aqsa mosque along with the sacred mosque Al-Aqsa mosque was, was the final stop in the Prophet's night journey and it was the point from which his ascension to heavens and then to the low tree of the utmost boundary started Al-Aqsa mosque is also the Muslims first Qibla or direction of prayer the third next to the two holy mosques and one of the three mosques to which journeys are undertaken for the sake of performing prayer and attaining their reward in addition it is the second mosque to be built on earth Abu Dar may Allah be pleased with him said O oh Allah's messenger which mosque was first built on the surface of the earth he said al masjid al haram in mecca i said which one was built next he replied the mosque of al aqsa in jerusalem i said what was the period of construction between the two he said 40 years he then said wherever the prayer time becomes due perform the prayer there for the best thing is to do so that is to offer the prayers in time furthermore observance of prayer in al-aqsa mosque is as worth and reward as 500 prayers in any other mosque with the exception of the sacred mosque and the prophet's mosque so in this regard the prophet peace be upon him said observance of one prayer in the sacred mosque in Mecca is 100,000 times better than the observance of it in any other mosque observance of prayer in my mosque in Medina is 1,000 times better than its observance in any other mosque and observance of prayer in Al-Aqsa mosque in Jerusalem is 500 times better than its observance in any other mosque so Al-Aqsa mosque is an indispensable part of the Islamic holy places it has a play it has a status in the hearts of all Muslims who all are all entrusted to protect it so we must not neglect it and must shoulder our due responsibility towards it 
we should implant this concept in the minds of our sons so that the forthcoming generation would not forget the holy of Al-Aqsa Mosque and its sacred status. Now I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped but Allah the Almighty and that our Prophet Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family and upon his companions. Muslim brothers, every year at the beginning of April the entire world celebrates the Orphans Day. Yet the teachings of our purified religion have actually preceded all the humanitarian organizations as to caring for orphans and granting them their due rights. Allah Most High says, and they ask you about orphans, say improvement for them is best. And if you mix your affairs with theirs, they are your brothers, and Allah knows the corrupter from the amender. And if Allah had willed, he could have put you in difficulty. Indeed, Allah is exalted in might and is wise. Whoever ponders over this holy verse will surely realize that the Quran has used the word islah or reform to cover all the different aspects of care since this word that is islah covers all that the orphan is in need for. For example, if he needs subsistence then Islah in this case will be the act of providing him with subsistence. In case he is rich, Islah might take the form of good education and uprising. In case he needs a partner to trade in his money or to manage his agriculture or industrial activities, Islah in this case will certainly be the fulfillment of these matters. And in case he doesn't need any of this, he might be in need for affection and kindness and paternal emotion, which is also included in the term of Islah. Furthermore, Islah might take the form of cultivating his manners, behavior, and ethics. To this point, all the Quranic and prophetic texts urged and called upon us to improve the conditions of the orphans and to run their affairs. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Whoever deals kindly with a male or female orphan under his custody will be with me in paradise like this and he joined his middle finger and forefinger together. He, peace be upon him, also said, the best of Muslim houses is the house where an orphan is well treated. The worst of the Muslim houses is a house where an orphan is ill treated. O oh Allah, make us from those who listen to speech and follow the best of it. Those are the ones Allah has guided, and those are the people of understanding. <laughs>